Are you interested in understanding GOP-1 medications like Ozempic, Wagovi, or Manjaro? Then join us on the Plus Side, Cracking the Obesity Code, the groundbreaking podcast helping people change their lives one episode at a time. The Plus Sides podcast is a disruptor. We're breaking down barriers, smashing stereotypes, and sharing inspiring stories that'll leave you feeling informed and empowered. Join us every week to learn from doctors who are specialists around GLP-1 medications like Ozempic, Bogovia, and Manjaro. They'll provide you with science and facts to validate these incredible stories. But that's not all. We'll also bring you the voices of the GLP-1 Manjaro TikTok community, real people who face the challenges of obesity related diseases and disorders and discovered the incredible plus sides of GLP-1 medications. Our episodes are filled with heartwarming stories, laughter, and moments of triumph. You'll connect with our amazing community members who are reclaiming their health and experiencing their fullest lives. Are you ready to embark on a journey of discovery and empowerment? Tune in to the plus sides cracking the obesity code and together we'll change the narrative around obesity and end the stigma. Subscribe now on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform platform and join our incredible community. Let's celebrate the plus sides of life together because every story deserves to be heard. Every life deserves to shine and everyone deserves access to expert knowledge and medication. The Plus Sides Podcast. You're not alone. It's not your fault. Welcome, welcome to the Plus Sides Podcast. Hey, we're there. <laughs> hey, hey, if you can't, if you can't, if you're watching, you can see that I'm very red. I like literally am so pink. I match my walls. Because I decided in nine degree weather would be great to like have some soup, which is just <laughs> rid- absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> great. Hi, friends. Aside from my hey. pink self with all my pink things, my pink walls, um, it's good to see you. I'm coordinating. Hi. Yes. So we have kind of a change up podcast today. Um, we do not have a community guest and we do not have a doctor. Mm, mm, mm. So what we'll do is quick intros. And if you're annoyed with us, go ahead and fast forward. Ah. <laughs> I'm Kim. This is the Plus Size Podcast. This is, if you're new here, uh, this is an obesity advocacy and educational podcast. We are trying to combat misinformation with education. And John just opened the garage and it was so loud. Okay. Did you hear all that? No. <laughs> you just told the room. Oh my God, it was so loud. Like my feet were vibrating. Anyway, hey. Um, and uh, uh, my name is Kim and um, the podcast is a, an award-winning podcast. We've been around for a little over a year now and um, we're helping people and um, just trying to, to change change lives and, and give some people that have been a marginalized community and largely ignored and mistreated a voice. Um, and uh, I, I am a host and these are my co-hosts as well. And JT is also one. She's just not here because uh, we have uh, Sabrina tonight. But uh, Kat and Sabrina, if you could do intros, that would be lovely. Right, okay. that's Go ahead, honey. All right, I'm Kat. <laughs> I'm a Libra. Oh, just kidding. I always do that all the time. I'm a Libra. Um, but I'm Kat. I have um, <clears throat> another, I'm a co-host, associate producer for pod, the podcast. And um, I've lost 60 pounds on a GLP-1. Um, I... Listen, I'm going to interrupt. You did not lose 60 pounds on a GLP-1. That's what not what you did. You took a GLP-1 to treat oh, your yeah, disease. Right. You lost 60 pounds because you bust your ass. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, for the record, I lost <laughs> on the GLP-1. You different. <laughs> and we're going to talk about the differences. Yeah. <laughs> You're okay. Yeah, you're, you're, this is a great episode for it too. See, I've I know, always, right? right. Mm, I've always good. loved fitness. Yes. I love being. Um, I live by that that notion that fit has no size, um, and I finally feel like I can look somewhat like somebody who loves fitness by mm-hmm. leveraging a GLP one to stop my binging. Thank you. Let's do this, therapist Kim. <laughs> All right, Sabrina. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sabrina, and um, I am, I've been on Manjaro for a year. I am down 76 pounds, um, leveraging a GLP-1 and increasing movement. I have also always been a fan of fitness. Lifting is what my passion is. I thoroughly enjoy um, banging and slinging them weights. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think it's the anger. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's like getting it out. You know. Yeah. What I mean? <laughs> well, I use a kettlebell and I use resistance bands. Nice. But I do it. <laughs> I'm not a fitty, but that's okay because the whole point it's is to totally share different perspectives fine. and talk about all the things, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So that's what we're gonna do today. Without further ado, for those who haven't fast forwarded yet, um, we will bring in our guest. Hi, James. Hi, how are you? <laughs> how are you? Good. Very pink and red. I'm trying. <laughs> we have to fix this here ring light for a minute. Hello. It's like fuchsia. Do? Yeah. Oh, that's better. There oh, you go. You're, you're less pink. Good great. That was ridiculous. <laughs> Thank God for ring lights. <laughs> Hi. So we're so glad to have you here. Um, obviously we connected. We saw many videos that you've done um, on TikTok. Your TikToker. I don't know if you're on YouTube too. Red. Where are all the platforms? No, no. Honestly, I, I, I I'm so resistant to YouTube because I just feel like I'm just going to be uploading everything I put on TikTok and Instagram anyway. Mm -hmm. It's just one more mm -hmm. platform, and I just I'm a coach who enjoys doing content. I'm not like I don't really monetize my content. Yeah, you know mm -hmm. what I mean. I right. Do. It's like you use your content to further like coaching and do stuff with your coaching. Right. Yeah. Like yes. for, yeah. I get that. That makes sense. Well, that's cool. Well, we're so glad to have you. Um, we would like to know a little bit more about your coaching and about your platform and um, how you help people, you know, cause you do. Yeah. Um, I've been in this industry for over 18 years, typical story of a trainer. I was an obese kid who got into shape. Um, I was bullied, so I didn't do it from a great place, so I got into disordered eating, but thankfully, I never let the toxic side come out in my training. I always gave people the same respect that I give now. I've always had high emotional intelligence, and I just kind of grew a passion for it. I had lunch with my phys ed coaches to pick their brains. I got my degree in exercise science, and then I held every position in the corporate gym world and now I'm owning zero shortcuts fitness training with my wife mm -hmm. and it's everything that I want that's awesome awesome it is awesome. okay we're excited like I said we're so excited to have you here um I'm gonna shoot away with the questions because this one is this one's important to me um so I grew up with the meathead older brother I'm sorry mm -hmm. Chris wherever you are <laughs> Um, uh, needless to say, many of his friends were kind of, well, they were, they were jerks, um, <laughs> maybe just a little bit of self-obsessed. And so, of course. um, but I learned quickly, you know, it wasn't isolated just to, to those guys. Um, but I've noticed over the years that fitness is becoming kinder. Um, would you say that it's getting kinder and, um, what direction do you see it coming in or it's am I correct? Both. Um, okay. Yes, there's more and more people like me trying to bring out the positive side of fitness, um, just showing it in a completely different light as opposed to misery and self-sacrifice and discipline. That's all they talk about is their discipline, like, like no one has ever been disciplined before fitness. And it just comes out a lot about how they grew in every aspect, but their emotional intelligence and their mental health. And there's a number of people who want to look a certain way or reach a certain level at the expense of their regular health or mental health for acceptance. And that's due to social media. And thankfully there's more and more people who are calling this out, letting people know like, no, this is not health. Like, please do not follow this. You may get mm -hmm. the physical results, but you can't leave your mental health on the back burner. So are there more um, resources and stuff where people get healthy the right way? Of course. But are there people trying to drive you off course for their own personal gain? Absolutely. So it's a matter of knowing who to listen to and why you're listening to them. Yeah. So you'd say like you're um, kind of going towards like it's, it's like mind, body, and spirit, which is everything. Of course. It, it all, it's all aligned instead of versus just the physical because of course like what you mentioned it's there's a brain behind it all so yeah and there's people like who don't 
who really misinterpret my words like all right so if i want quality of life that means that like i'll like eat everything and like not exercise and like uh, you, it's just like the, you're going way too far way too black and white like yes there has to be some self-sacrifice yes mm -hmm. there there's nuances to everything yes there's an adaptation period the point is you do the terrifying thing for long enough it's not terrifying anymore you do it for long enough under the yeah. right context now all of a sudden you're kicking ass instead of feeling like you're just doing an unnecessary chore gotcha People all right well then you're like a therapist kind of, yeah oh yeah 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 my <laughs> i'm sure you do that all day every day with with your clients huh Oh, my clients, I get over 500 DMs a day. And oh. I obviously can't answer all of them. Like, like, yeah. like when I have a, like people send me like novels and I'm like, love you, but I can't, I can't read this. Like, like, like I oh, have like totally 300 really. more. Like, like, I'm sorry. Like if you can condense it, mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe. But but um, there's people like really, really sharing their like inner vulnerabilities and fears. And it's completely understandable because I've been there. And most of the time, they don't need a special diet. They don't need a special workout. They just need to get out of their own way. They haven't been consistent long enough because they keep getting in their own head. Mm -hmm. That's all. It's just it's just consistency. I agree with that. I think consistency is a, it's a big part of it, you know, but, um, so I've got a question for you. Uh, there are many of us in this community who have some trauma mm -hmm. attached to fitness, um, such as bullying, forced workouts, um, okay. in PE class. Mm -hmm. Have you, uh, trained with individuals that suffer from this and how do you get them reintroduced to activity? Of course. Yeah. Well, first off, I'm not thinking that I'm above them. So I'm just having a conversation with another human being. I'm not like, all right, all right, this is what you do. You got to cut out carbs. You got to cut out sugar. You got That's all shit that they've heard before. So I just shut up and then they talk. And then once they realize that I'm not here to judge them, they keep talking. And then we kind of get to the bottom of what's been holding them back, whether that's limiting beliefs, um, not having enough faith in themselves, um, time management, uh not a great support system and then we start going after that i mean the workouts the diet and nutrition that's all going to come in time we have to mm -hmm. take care of the underlying factors first because otherwise if i just give them a meal plan and some bullshit workout plan it's like putting a band-aid on a bullet wound mm -hmm. it's not gonna it's not gonna do anything so we have to get to the bottom of it and then we have to recognize certain patterns that aren't that conducive to their health and certain patterns that they've been doing that are and then we reinforce that and then they're able to kind of feel better about themselves and realize they're in a safe space and then now they're able to kind of be open with me about what they have been doing right what they haven't been doing right and then i can effectively coach them yeah do you as, have any uh, go ahead like as far as like specific interventions based on the workouts and stuff like yeah. that that's just per individual so i don't have an answer mm -hmm. to the masses yeah that makes total sense do you yeah. i mean and you don't have to share if you want to but do you have people that come to you that struggle with obesity that are taking obesity medicines or what people keep calling weight loss medicines and i um, have not had i've only had one client who took manjaro mm -hmm. and that's it yep was your experience with that client any different in terms of their consistency? No, no. This was just a tool that um, helped them. They could still very much be stuck in their own way. Mm, interesting. Mm. So this was just something to kind of just help them along a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But we still tried to have consistent lifestyle habits as much as possible. Interesting. Do you feel like it helped them with their lifestyle habits at all? Like, do you think it helped them stick with the, what the changes? Well, were? well, well, she didn't do this until like six months into our program. Oh, okay. Mm. So they were pretty well established for the most mm. part. Okay. This was just cause like she really was doing everything right. But mm -hmm. the fat loss was just so stubborn mm -hmm. 
And I don't want any of my clients doing this when they're not ready to. Mm -hmm. Because if you just drop the weight and you don't really have the tools and resources to sustain it, Mm -hmm. then it's only inevitable for you to gain it right back. I've done that with um, the, the, um, the, the HCG diet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I lost I about 35 pounds. Yeah. I lost about 35 pounds in 22 days and I gained back like 40 in two months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's really good, James, like it, when you say things like that, because I'll tell you as like someone who's like learned so much from having the doctors on our show, the obesity specialists and on our show and talking like how the medicines work and why they work and how you pair them with what we call, which I feel like society calls lifestyle changes, but it makes me want to vomit because of all my years of diet culture saying that there needs to be health. I want to just like healthy habits. Like, I don't know. I I just, it's going to cute. But um, I think that um, I think it's really good that you talk about the fact that you have struggled with weight, because I will tell you my experience with most trainers is that they act like they've got it figured out and I'm missing it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, clearly if I can't, if they can do it, I should be able to do it period. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was very similar to your, um, you know, the one you mentioned, like it just wasn't coming off. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, 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 or it would, and then it would rebound. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm curious too, like, and I just think that's really good that you do that. I'm just saying, like, I feel like that that probably helps a lot with your empathy and trust with people um, because it is very difficult um, and I have been, I'm like, where you were struggling with obesity, I've, I've had it forever, James. I've, I've always been like this, you know, and I've been on every diet there is, and I've done all the plans under the sun and I've been like, oh, well, now I'm going to get on this machine and this machine, I'm going to do this. And tomorrow I'm going to get my workout fit and I'm going to start this and I'm going to do my diet. I'm going to get on my Weight Watchers, fuck Weight Watchers. And I, you know, it's just back and forth, like all the time. And it, that's what my whole damn life was like, you know, and that's why like, I'm like, I do my kettlebell in my room by myself because like, it's the only way that I know, but I also like do other things too. Like I love, um, I love like, it sounds weird. I can't believe I'm saying it, but like cleaning, I used to hate to clean. I still don't like to clean, but the act of cleaning and like only focusing on the movement. I despise and, um, cleaning. <laughs> but it's it's very physical like, when you're really getting into the mop and all things. But Kim, I, I understand what cleans. you're saying. Yeah, yeah. That's, and that's you cook good. and your wife cleans. <laughs> well, that's good. That's a fair trade off. I do both. Oh, some of the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's our editor. You heard. <laughs> we should be splitting things. <laughs> Jim, I can relate to you when you're talking about the cleaning part of it because when I before you know I have lo- had lost all the yeah. weight, it was painful for me. It was, I wouldn't be able to clean the entire house. I'd be able to clean a little bit and then I would have to sit down and, or I'd have to take some ibuprofen prior to cleaning. I mean, I, I, I hated it, but now I'm, I'm moving and grooving. (laughs) I don't know what it is. It's just sort of, it just feels good. Like, I I think that's what it is. It's not. um, And then I also love the fact that I'm not on my phone. Do you know what I mean? Like, so it's like the, 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 because I'm I'm a content creator, you know, and marketer. So I'm always on damn internet. So it's just nice to like be doing something physical where like, I'm just busy, but I'm not, Mm -hmm. I'm purposely choosing not to be on my phone. Mm -hmm. And like, that's something, but I mean, I think there's a lot of ways to do movement, right? Um, And movement's important. And I think all of these things are important, like nutrition and, and all of these things. But I do think that a lot of times people start these medications and a lot of it is because of the doctor. They don't tell them that these are things that you should be doing alongside because as as much as we say, oh, I'm taking Majaro. What does Tay always say? I'm taking Majaro to hospice, right? Um, You know, and it's just because we've all struggled for so long, right? But um, at the end of the day, we don't know if we're going to get our meds next month. We we don't know that. Yeah. So we need the foundation. Yeah. So being able to understand, and I think also the medicine does sort of help us get to a place of physical health so that we can do a lot of like the mental stuff and then those habits that we've always been able to not stick to in my experience allows me to stick to them mm-hmm. um i really like you said like was in my own way all the time mm-hmm. all the time and then i would do something and then i would go right back and then i would do something and i would go right back and it was always always the food noise right always the constant we're starving mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what i'm saying and then once the starving thing went away, everything like I'm 
I'm a badass. Like I, I like, I'm not, I like, I don't, you know, I'm not like spinning like cat and shit, but I do all the things in the land. Like, you know, never before when I was I ever able to handle anything more than like basically just my job and my complicated family, you know? And then it just sort of shifted, you know? Go ahead. Your question was nice. Said. Mine kind of, it, you, you've answered a lot, but I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to still ask it um, about gym tools and uh, channeling your inner Tammy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not everybody knows about Tammy. I know. That's what I was going to say. Great. So pause this podcast and go look for Tammy on James's Instagram and uh, TikToks and be entertained. Um, but I think sometimes that is the fear that some of us in, the, in our community have when going to a fitness center or to a gym is that there's a lot of unsolicited, unsolicited advice and jerks if I ask you. Especially sometimes as somebody who is in a heavier body, I <laughs> I remember I was in a camp class and an instructor came up to me and said, you can really move <laughs> because I was so heavy. She's like, you just got to lose a couple of LBs and you'll be fine. Oh. I said, heifer. <laughs> I'm sorry. What an amateur. I'm sorry. Yeah. What a schmuck. Oh. But anyway, I want to know. I mean, now I think doing this work in this podcast is, is giving me definitely a lot more um, traction and kind of like resources. But what would you say to our audience? What are some of the things that you can you channel your inner cameisms or your inner, um, inner, inner voice being diplomatically nice to someone to it to a gym a gym jerk? <laughs> okay. So just know that if someone gives you, if someone gives you unsolicited advice, then that's more of a reflection of them than it is about you. It's what they fear within themselves. And just take a deep breath knowing that, like, be the bigger person, you know. Um, maybe they're being genuine, maybe not, but nothing's going to happen if I bring like animosity to this now if they double down or if they keep going then you bring your tammy up then you bring the claws out okay. so at first your like response should be cool-headed but then you know if this person wants nothing more than for you to feel bad about yourself you you put them in their place really quick and let them you know how sad they actually are that's that's how i feel but you do it with with your chest you don't you don't go down to their level you just kind of tell them like hey you're coming off really pathetic right now and you're invading my space for whatever reason but mm -hmm. if you aren't committed enough to focus on your own workout and you have to focus on me then that's pretty sad yeah There's something around those lines and usually if you just break it down logically uh, logically like that, they'll fold. <laughs> Not just go fuck yourself. What's he? No. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. That's a good. Those are, that's that's great advice. Yeah, you should. Yeah, right. huh? yeah I like that. <laughs> no. it's true though because um, I. But I will say though. Uh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. Uh, uh, um, so I will say that as far as the gym goes, it does get a bad rap based on social media and stuff. And there are so many people who are willing to dap you up and help you and give you advice. Like it's, mm -hmm. it could be a very, very positive environment. Some of the best relationships I've had were in gyms. I agree. And yeah. Really the people who like, try to make it a worse place, they don't last there for long. Right. Um, the majority of what happens at the gym is not what is shown on social media, right? Like, the, it's the jerks and th those people that are being mean. That's what gets, like, glorified on social media. But actually happening in the gym is someone's helping someone out. Someone's has help. A stranger is helping spot you. Or, you, you know, it, it's yeah, happening at the gym. Teaching you how to do something right, give you no or, or just helping. Yeah, 
just like yeah. hiding or cheering you on. Yeah. Yeah. Strangers and each other on, right? Yeah. Strangers. You know, it just, it can be um, an amazing experience, but that doesn't always get shown on social media. But I think the orchids are high. We're like, yeah, we do. That's most of the things we see. Just like we see people who are get deathly ill from taking these medications way more than we see the 98% of people that have never any problems with it and change their lifestyle and live their life and swim with dolphins. And you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the stuff that nobody's, they, they'll always look for the negative things. Right. You know, for sure. That makes total sense. Yeah. Well, the, well, James, the majority of us in this community have finally found a little bit of help with the GLP-1 medication to help get our eating disorders, hormonal dysregulations under control. Um, the byproduct of this is making us feel normal around food. Um, some people feel that we're taking the easy way. Of course. Your thoughts on this from well, your industry perspective. Well, I mean, um, so, so like I have ADHD is taking Adderall my easy way out. No, you need, you need it. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm, I, I mean, I, can I function without it? Sure, but like if given a choice, I'll take the Adderall ten thousand percent. It helps me stay in line. Helps me focus. It helps me thrive. And for you, for just having this barrier that no one else can really understand unless they're in your shoes, they don't have a right to speak upon what's a shortcut or what isn't. It. And if you carry out what you're supposed to carry out, like this, this, this medication is on magic. You still have to put the work in. Whatever you said. You know, um, that's like, that's like even people who like compete and take steroids, if they're honest about the steroids, then I really respect them because they're still putting the work in. They acknowledge that they're doing the performance enhancement drugs, probably because they're just competing on a different level. And as long as you're honest, you're good. You're good. I'm not taking anything away from the work ethic. But if you stand there and say, oh yeah, I'm all natural and like you look like the liver king, then, then you're a joke. Yes. Yeah, and it's the same thing like what you were talking about. Your... It's it's about yeah. Go on, go on. It's okay. Oh, I was just saying that like you, you can't take steroids and then just get huge. You have to put the work in, you know. But yeah, mm -hmm. so well, that's a good way to look at it, Sabrina. I never thought about that. Yeah, they take steroids all day long, but if they don't go exercise their body, it's not going to happen. That thing happens. Yeah, so. I think that too many people have. Too many people have too many opinions about other people's body and business and food and all that. Like, and they try to say, like, what about you? You put into, like, everyone's life and stuff. Like, no, 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 I'm calling out their ignorance. That is completely different. Yep. And just people who can't focus on themselves or do the work themselves just try to put down others to give them some sort of value. So if you know your value, then in your case is your superwoman. You don't have to worry about anything because someone who tries to diminish your value doesn't know shit. <laughs> we have someone in our media this week that I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden one of his posts, somebody made a video about it. Um, and he's, he's very open a, a, about his journey and all these different things in our community and taking Manjaro, but he, he is in the gym. Like he is, he talks about nutrition. He is, he talks about all three things, right? Um, the, the, the metabolic dysfunction, treating that scientifically, right? That piece of it biologically. And then all the other things too. But somebody came at him and it's pissing me off. And, and as if he was doing this and then hiding what he was doing, but he, he isn't, but someone specifically said, oh, it's just not fair. Like you're getting a competitive edge or something like that. It was some sort of trash like that. And it was like, and I know it makes him feel awful. Cause like, I don't care, don't care who you are. Like when somebody, when somebody does something like that, I feel like at least that's what I see from my perception. Like you're automatically the little fat kid again. I don't understand why like wh i guess my question is, is clearly you don't have a problem with it but there are people that you are in your space right that seem to what do you what is their problem <laughs> what do you think their problem is 
their problem is that speak for a whole population. <laughs> they, they've spent times are changing, advancements in science are changing, mm -hmm. um, acceptance within oneself is changing, and the openness about mental health is changing. So, yeah, people who were once quote unquote worships due to their physique. Mm -hmm don't feel that special anymore mm -hmm. because someone who just took Manjaro who feels great but may not look socially acceptable yet is feeling all this pride and they're like um you shouldn't feel that pride yet I worked my ass off like to get to where I am you can't feel what I feel yet and you again it becomes that. about them yeah and it's their inability to step outside of themselves yeah yeah, that's that's really good. I didn't think about that. Great answer. <laughs> well, well, I mean, I face it. I face it all the time. All the time. I am. I am fat shamed on a daily basis. Really? That's so yeah. wild. Yeah. yeah. Like, Blows my mind. It's 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 fine. I'm I'm nowhere near offended. I get more offended on other people's behalf. Yeah. Than, it's than, than I like I myself. I like that. <laughs> that one guy. Okay, this is how we found you because Kat sent me the video. Yeah. That one guy where he was talking about basically like if you are fat, you are you are useless, I like you're not moral, you are not worthy, like that one. Um, yeah. and it was like a panel, and that was the one that you were commenting on. That was the one I do edited to, to get you to go on the show. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Who who I don't want to know the backstory. Who was that person? What are they doing? <laughs> like, I believe you're talking about Myron. Person. Maybe they're talking about Myron. Yeah. You called him pumpkin. So, what'd you call everyone pumpkin? Well, well, I mean, I call everyone I don't like pumpkin. <laughs> I did go at someone the other day and I ended it with thanks, pumpkin or something. <laughs> I, thought it would be funny. <laughs> I was like, it stuck. <laughs> but yeah, that's um, what it was. It was like it was like a panel and there was a larger guy there. Um Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Yeah. So, 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 so that was sorry, that was a fat you. yes, okay. yes. So that was a fat verse fit. Uh, podcast which is absurd and god i wish i was invited i wish i was invited oh, what is that tell us it's an actual it's, show it's not like one episode it's an it's, actual it's yeah it, it's um jubilee and there's different oh, topics and stuff right so this one was just fat versus fit and there was overweight content creators and fit content creators and oh okay and they're just skewed perception on value and self-worth and all that. And it's amazing how articulate and how smart the, the overweight side was. And yeah. just how, there's no other word to put it, how dumb some of the people on the fit side were. Yeah. And, I would say brute, right? Wanted to, yeah. Was it brute, and, like, yeah. Yeah, and, and I promise, if if it were the other way around, I would admit it. Like, like I don't tolerate fat or um, overweight people on like fit shaming. Um, either way, yeah. it's not okay with me. No, so true. it's not like I have a biased like perspective. No, it's just like they don't. There was one part that really got me furious. There was a gentleman there. Um, I forgot his name, but like, he's like big into like fashion and stuff like that. And he was like, you know, like I was like looking at my outfit and I was like, damn, like, like, you know, like you like killed it. Like you look great. And then they're like, no, no, you're lying. You're lying. You didn't think you look great. And it's like, you can't do that. That's not how like reality works. It's like, if he thinks he looked great, he looked great. And sure. like, of course you're going to win every argument if you're just like, no, no, you don't feel that way. Right. It's like, what are you, six? Like, God forbid, they're like, oh, so that's really interesting. So you didn't think that you were less than because of your weight? And they could have had a very intellectual discussion. Yeah. It's like, I am more than my body. Of course I want to prioritize my health. Of course, ideally, maybe I would want to be in a more... Um, healthy frame of a call for it. Mm -hmm. But at that moment, I was really digging what I was seeing. And that had nothing to do with my weight. 
and it could have been a learning experience, but instead of learning, it's no, not true. Yeah. And that just got me furious because that could have just meant so much if they just had a dialogue, but di- but dialogue doesn't get clicks. Yes. Right. So right. true. God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's, um, you don't have to answer this if you don't want to, <laughs> but it's a little loaded. But the reason I'm asking is because we just saw this doctor respond to this girl's video who was basically talking about like kind of this woman had stitched and you can't stitch a stitch. So it was kind of wonky the way it was together. Plus a plus size traveler. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they were talking about like traveling and being plus size and all of the thing. And then this woman, clearly someone that looks very fit, like to my perspective, just my perspective. Right. Um, And um, made a video where she was like, basically saying like, if you're going to be, and I, and I really, here's the thing. I think, I think that she was, it's, it's complicated. Um, I'm going to send it to you after this, but I think that what she was trying to say was if you're going to go the whole body positivity route and you're going to say, I choose to be in my big body. I choose not to kill myself with diet and exercise. I choose to do all these things. Then you don't need to be complaining or whatever, right. About the seat that you're in on the plane because you've chosen that. Right. I think that's what she was trying to say. Um, I don't know all of it. I mean, all of it was awful. She just showed her stupid face. But regardless, I wanted to know, what do you think about the body positivity movement? So I think that the people who don't understand it blow it way out of proportion and they don't, they just don't get it. They just think that people are going be fat with me, come to the buffet with me, Mm -hmm. um, break the scale with me, come on. And I promise you, if someone was advising people to be sedentary, to eat nothing but saturated fat and sugar, I would have a problem with that. Makes sense. But someone smiling in a bigger body is not a crime. Someone loving themselves is fantastic. Do you know how many of my clients I wish loved themselves like that from the beginning? They would have so much more success in their whole journey. Yeah. And it's just because they're finding happiness where the haters can't. Mm -hmm. And there's no other way to put it. If you see an overweight person smiling, laughing, and being happy and loving themselves, and that pisses you off, there's something wrong with you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's oh, yeah. not. It's not promoting obesity. The slightest is someone existing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. Existing. I, yep. I totally existing. agree. But not just existing. Trying to survive. Trying to thrive in a world full of people telling them they're not enough or they're right. too much. Yeah. Right. And it's a constant message everywhere you go in this country. Yeah, right? and and they won't say the thing that is painfully obvious is like you would rather them have a pouty face and go hide in the corner until they're socially acceptable and then they're happy because that's what you would do Mm -hmm. and everyone uses anecdotal evidence because they're incapable of critical thought Mm -hmm. so when I show kindness and empathy all of a sudden I'm coddling and sugarcoating and Mm -hmm. if you all have been following me for a while I tell everyone exactly what they need to hear yeah. It's actually a little jarring, to be honest. Uh, and I like it because uh, it's sort of like you are, you have these moments of just like this kindness and empathy, but then you're like, no, no, no. <laughs> you say the thing that needs to be said. And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it is. And, and it's not jarring in a bad way. It's, I think it's the effect, right? It's guidance, it's, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's, I yeah. love it. Guidance. Yeah. 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 Well, clearly lots of people do. <laughs> so it's, you know. But yeah, but I was just curious because like I when I saw that and I knew I made a video because I knew I knew that my community may not be. But I really think that it, that body positivity and the message that we have, like I was perpetuated, which is I am choosing to live in this body. And yeah. it's not a, it's not a choice. So we have moved away from talking about obesity as a disease, as a dysfunction, as what it is, right? As someone that has an illness that deserves and is you know, worthy of medication and move towards a, oh, like you said, I'm choosing to sit here and 
eat nothing and try to break the scale, right? Like that's not, that's not what it is. But I think that the movement is so misunderstood, which I think is what you said yeah. too, right? That that's what people think. But ultimately, I think the problem is, is that you're looking at someone going, I choose this, I choose my curse, I choose this. But the answer for me, I'll, I'll just be like super honest. I never during body positivity, anything ever chose to be in my body. I just knew that no matter what I did, I couldn't seem to control it for very long. Right. And so I gave up and it wasn't until I went to the doctor and the blood work's not looking like it should. Right. That the doctor's like, Hey, we should try this medicine and get your blood work and your body doing what it needs to do. You know what I mean? That things actually changed for me. You know, and the mental work that you have to do, I was able to actually change, right? So, like, for example, when food noise got turned off, it was an opportunity. It was critical thinking, right, yeah. James? Like, so for me, it was, I don't know what to do with myself because I've always had an emotional relationship sure. with food. I did not know what to do with myself. And I got to a moment where I was like, what am I like? I literally remember it severing like a cord and being so sudden and so yeah, jarring. Yeah. And I was like, how do I, I remember being like, how do I make myself feel better now? Like having that thought. And then I remember like internally going, maybe I was always enough. And I was like, what just happened? And that right there, those moments, right? Treating the disease and allowing those moments, right? Where your brain can make these connections. And then you're like, okay, Maybe I can exercise. Maybe I can eat better. Oh, wait yes. a minute. I don't actually think I want cakes and cookies anymore. I want Brussels sprouts with honey. And like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the kind of stuff yeah. that changed for me because it was like everything was working like it was supposed to. So, so my why brain, wouldn't you take care of yourself? Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But it was all of that. That is something that we try to talk about on the podcast a lot. So like we've had a cognitive behavioral therapist, we have dietitians, we have, we have all the things um, because we want people to understand this is a full circle thing. But I, I, even myself knowing all of this, when people say do the hard work, like that, that comes with it. I know that me doing those things that I just mentioned is hard work, but it's not as hard as it was before. And yeah. the problem is that I, yeah. I so oftentimes I, I think that's where my brain is like easy way out. Is this easy? Is it? No, it's just a little easier so that I can actually accomplish. This. You sure, know sure. I mean? you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're still challenging yourself. You're still growing. Yeah. You're just yeah. not miserable anymore. Yes. Right. Yeah. That's so I, I always say this to my clients at, at any point, I could ruin all the progress I made with my mental health and my physical health and go back to like, you know what? My body is unacceptable. They're right. Yeah. And I could just do this again for other people, but I've never been in better shape than I am now. And who would have thought the secret was just being like 40 pounds heavier. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating. That's amazing. Fascinating. Yeah. Yes. So true. Yeah. And I think, I do think that it's common for us to think about, health just being what the scale looks like. But I think ultimately that's not what it is. I mean, like we talk about it with Kat a lot. She's very open about it. She's and, and, and Brina too, but like also, but like Kat cut from the beginning, Kat's a fitty. Like she is a spin class, like marathon going kind of girl. And she'll be like, well, it's only 60. And I'm like, well, shit, you're mostly muscle. Have you seen your ass? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm like? No, like, you know, but like, they're, like we have, I think we have to like, it's, it's be realistic for like your body and how you were made, you know, but cats built like a brick shit house. You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 My whole family. Yeah. My whole family is bigger. That's just like who we are. Uh -huh. And I started being a bigger kid at like seven or eight. Same. Right. Yeah. And in order for me to get down to 10% body fat, like I did, I needed my eating disorders. I needed my exercise bulimia. I needed to go down to 600 calories a day. I needed to chew mm. and spit. I needed to work out two hours a day, six days a week. Mm -hmm. Like, and I different. thought that was normal. I thought that was fitness. Right. And I didn't take me getting blackout drunk every weekend as like a hint, like yeah. maybe, maybe you're kind of miserable. Yeah. Yeah. 
what was it? What do you did you see that that video that's been going all around with a guy that's British and he was mm. talking about his sister that has obesity? Did you see that? Yeah. One? Oh yeah, yeah. B.D. Carpenter, Ben. Yeah. Oh my god, that was when, I was like so when tough. he said when he said I had to get my body dick skin thin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He said he was absolutely miserable. Don't let Bella watch this episode, Brina. <laughs> but you know, when he said that, you're like, oh my God, that is skinny. <laughs> like, but when he was talking about that, like, voracious, like, like that hunger that he, when he put his body in a certain state, mm -hmm. like, and his sister was like, I'm like that all the time. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, like, I don't know, like for me and like, we've talked about it with the doctors and stuff like versus, you know, um, and I don't know, like maybe there is a certain level of obesity. I don't think they know yet that you can hit that's sort of like reversible, right? Like, for example, like my mom always, I would say struggle with weight, like 20 pounds, you know, yeah. always kind of just like, I would say an average fit. Very, She's a very athletic um, woman, but she when she, my dad got cancer, my sister got sick, all these bad things kind of happened and she went through menopause and then it just wasn't moving. And she was like, yeah, she's honest about it. She's like, the only joy that I had was food because I was so yeah. miserable as like a caregiver and all the things, right? And so she was just barely on that BMI side and eventually started taking GLP and yeah. it helped her get back. And she's like, I have so many benefits like with my arthritis and all of these different health things. Like, I don't see a reason to stop taking it because it's not the weight for me. It was all the things that it helped. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's really fascinating, but I don't know if that's possible. I don't know if there are people that are like in that 20 pound range where you do the things and it's fine, right? Or you take the medicine, you do the things and then you get off the medicine and it's fine. Or if there's always gonna be that regain. And I don't, I don't think the doctors know either. Have you guys gotten, I don't feel like the doctors don't know. Mm -mm. You know. They seem to understand the me's, right? The 100, the 200, the 300, like, you know what I mean? Pound, like extra weight people. They seem to be like, nah, you know, like obesity, it's a thing. It's going to return. We know it's going to return. It's a chronic disease. That's why we call it that. Right. But I, but I'm wondering what you think, because I think that you've probably seen the other side of it. Mm -hmm. So I have had clients who have been struggling with weight their whole lives and they finally just needed someone to be patient with them, listen to them. And then they've lost a hundred plus pounds and they kept it off without any like medication intervention. They That's just had awesome. to know for a, long time, that... for a long time. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like years yeah. and years. Eight plus Eight years. Wow. That's... This, this, this guy, Menzel, who was my favorite client ever. Um, he was one of my first people at Crunch 38th Street. And when we started training, all we could do was walk around the gym. He, mm -hmm. he was too big to do anything else. His joints couldn't take it, right? But he came five times a week. And he meal prepped. And he walked to 38th and Broadway from Brooklyn. So... He, he showed up like he walked like two hours every day there and back. He, he gave me everything. He even let his phone bill go to keep paying for me. And I like went to give him a lighter rate and he said, I refuse to pay anything but your rate. Mm. So he, he meant everything to me and he kept it off and it really became a part of his life. There was someone I just trained recently, um, Alan, who lost about 100 pounds, who now wants to become a trainer. Oh. So there's some people who mm -hmm. kind of just do it. But yeah. I will say that that's rare. Yeah. That's what the doctors have said to us, is that ultimately, once your body is in sort of this broken metabolically, if that makes sense, like, I don't want to say beyond repair. Hair, but like I kind of also do and not that it won't happen and that you can't lose weight and all those things but that it will recur right like at some yeah. point right so the doctors have said the obesity specialists have said ultimately there are people like that but that's because what we've been saying which is everybody's body is different right and that's why the prescription of eat less and move more for everybody's body makes no sense right no like that just doesn't like everyone's everyone's different like Cat eats less and moves her freaking face off, and she's still like a 
plus size. Well, she's smaller than me, but she's she's a plus size lady. I made yeah, brownies so. today for a cookout, okay. so I had one. Didn't have brownies, guys. No. <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you, did you eat all the brownies? I had, no, and you know, I can bake yeah. my face off, so this is kind of dangerous for me. But yeah, yeah <laughs> you are a good baker, man. Oh <laughs> Lord, I wouldn't want to live with you. I, I, would, I would definitely have all the reading in the land. <laughs> that's for sure. But, yeah. but I think that that's true, though, right? Like, I'm oh. sure that you've seen when people like apply, like you said, like a certain thing, like it may or may not work for them, right? Or may or may yeah. not. Yeah. Well. I have some clients who get it right away. I have some clients who don't lose a pound yeah. after like a year of training. Mm. And it's usually because that year we were just deconditioning old habits and old ways yeah. of thinking. Mm -hmm. I bet and, though, if they didn't lose a pound, that this always happened to me. I bet their body still like the conversation yes. changed. Yes. Right. Like, Ooh, can we talk about that? Sure. I have asked so many people, and I swear to God, the, the best answer I got was from a doctor who said, what happens to the fat when you lose it, you breathe it out in a scientific thing. Why does my body look so different, James? Like, I don't, what happens? Where's it going? Like, when I'm losing inches and my, my scale is not going down, where the fuck did it go? Like, I it's, want an answer. It, it's, called, it's called the body recomp. And that's essentially what, what happened, happened to me. Like, did I poop it out? What happened? I don't know. Maybe you know. <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> so, if you consistently resistance train, and you keep up with your protein demands, and you sleep well, and you recover properly, then you will add muscle and lose inches. That is very much possible. A lot of people are under the impression you can't gain muscle unless you're in a surplus. That's not true. So you do, in fact, lean out a little bit more, but your weight will stay the same. And the whole thing that muscle weighs more than fat, it's now muscle is more dense than fat. Yeah. So there's plenty of people who, like, like I'm 243, and I will show you two pictures of me looking completely different at the exact same weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I weigh 243, and we don't look the same. <laughs> At all. The idea of, well, the idea of muscle weighs more. It's, I mean, yeah. a pound of fat is a pound of fat, a pound of muscle yes. is fat, But the but muscle think takes up less space, right? Mm -hmm. The muscle yes. takes up less space. So it's, yes, not, exactly. it's not that muscle weighs more. It just yeah. takes up less space. So like, one of the doctors that was on our show, um, James, was talking about we have one called like the lies about Manjaro. We're talking about the whole idea that people say, so I want to talk about the, the DEXA scan. Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. And also like muscle loss. So like the doctors on our show, you know, they're one of them specifically is very into fitness and movement and is an obesity doctor. And she says like, so she's, she's all about moving your body and getting in your protein. But she's basically was like, listen, like on these medicines, like it, you're, it does not eat your muscle. Right. But you do, need to strength train just like you would have to on any weight loss journey right and you do need to um eat about as she said about 30 grams at least per meal um yeah, that's usually a standard. Protein. yeah. Standard. and but a lot of people i would tell you i eat way more protein now than i ever eat when i was big i was like carb carbolicious i i do yeah but but i've never done the scan thing right like i've only done the smart scale um but I want to know, like, as you watch people kind of reshape, like, if, especially if you look at them, like, with one of those scans, like, I'd love to know your experience with that. And then also, like, when they do that and their muscle, like, how much, like, how much, because people are going to lose muscle when they lose weight, right? So, um, well, that's all I know. That's all we really know is the doctors say it's going to happen. It's just you don't want to lose too much, right? Or you look at the studies where, and that's the thing, too, is in the studies, all they did was cardio. Like, nobody was doing strength training or anything. So, and they weren't on a diet. They were just on a calorie deficit. So nobody was really doing like nutrition mm -hmm. and movement. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like nobody was like doing those things. So the fact that they lost muscle, like makes sense to me now. Right. So oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Right. I mean, like, I mean, that's, that's, that's how you become quote unquote skinny fat. That's, that's mm -hmm. the term that they use. Mm -hmm. It's when you lose a good amount of body fat, but you're not retaining muscle because yeah. it's either too significant of a deficit 
without strength training or you're not recovering properly. Yeah. Yeah. So, and like when we were talking with them about the strength training, Dr. Ali said, like, honestly, if you just did like any kind of strength training, like around your house, going up and down stairs, like resistance bands, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, like three days a week. Three times a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a good, right. that's a good, I wanted to jump in because I think that takes care of my, my, my question is the people who felt okay. kind of intimidated because they're not fitties, but yeah. just to pause this right here, you don't need to be like a gym rat. You can just go upstairs. No, no, no. And the best part is, you know. is if you're sedentary, like, like doing nothing, your adaptation period in the beginning is awesome. Mm-hmm. You pack on muscle so quick. You will see so many results so quick. And usually yeah. that's what, if they're consistent for long enough, that's what like grabs them and takes hold of them. Yeah. That's, that's what I love about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I wish I had done the, that. Yeah. You know, I wish I had done well, that. I well, didn't know well, that. When, when you were working out, were you doing it to just lose weight and look better? Yeah. I'm, well, no, I would just honestly, like for me, so I'm like diet culture city, right? Like, <laughs> First diet at eight years old, my mama, like, you know, so I've always been like, a, I walk and you know what I mean? I sometimes I'll go to the gym, do the gym, right. but I've never been like, a, let me go to spin class. Let me go to yoga. Let me, let me like lift the weights. Like it's never been like that for me, you know? Right. So when I, when I started this, like I knew I, I was very scared. I really didn't know anything. There was so much ignorance. I found a lot of people on TikTok, started following them. They were all kind of going through the same thing at the same time. Cause that was when Manjaro like first came out mm-hmm. and, um, and I was just like, well, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, that's what I told myself in the beginning. I'm just going to eat a little less and move a little more. That's all I did. It was the first time in my life I've ever approached it that way. And all I did was just, that's it. Just, I ate a little and I was not eating well, but I just ate a little bit less. And then I didn't, I was in too much pain. So what I did was I was like, what can I do? Right. And I was great that my brain could even do this. And I swear it wasn't until the medicine really, but I was like, I can keep up with my dishes and I can keep up with my laundry. Right. I can make sure I can make sure. Right. Like something. That's what I have to do. Not let it pile up. Right. And there's something about that, like mental switch for me. And then I lost a little bit of weight and I was like, maybe I could do a little bit more. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then as the weight started to kind of stabilize, all of a sudden, I didn't want any junk anymore. I started craving things like protein, yes. vegetables. And I'm like, what's happening, right? <laughs> because it was regulating, yep. right? And then it allowed me to do all of that work. But that mental work is like imperative. And it's so hard when people first come in to not pounce on them when you've seen them, when you've seen people go through this journey for two years, right? Mm-hmm. To not be like, when they're like, what diet should I be on? What gym should I go to? And, I'll, and so what I tell them now is be a little bit less, keep up with your laundry and your dishes, <laughs> just because it's yeah, just yeah. a little bit, you like, know? Like, like my followers, like my followers ask me like, hey, what's the best diet for this? Or like, what's the quickest way to do this? And I'm like, do you really think I'm going to give you an answer? I was like, how long have you been following me? Right. I was like, do you really think I'm going to tell you to cut out carbs? Do you really think I'm going to tell you to do a 48-hour water fast? I was like, what are you doing right now? What can you build upon? What can you do consistently? What do you enjoy? What makes you feel empowered and not like you're losing all the time? What can you keep showing up to that doesn't feel like daunting work? That is unique to you. You have to do that soul searching. I can't answer that for you. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. 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 I love that. I love that. Like about what, what is unique to you? Like, I think that's, that's really important because people do think they need, because that's what we've been trained to think James, right? Like, yeah, there's, there's so, there's, there's so many trainers and fitness professionals who care about their ego more than the wellness of others. And they have an answer for everything. If it's out of my scope of practice, or if I don't know, I say, I can't answer that because I'm not, protecting myself in order to make myself feel better and to cause you to go downhill for some reason. Hmm. I'm wondering too, like, I feel like something else I've, I've heard, but nobody will kind of come out and say is that ultimately when you live in a bigger body, you do have more muscle in a way, like, I don't want to say more muscle, but you, you need more muscle to move that body around. Right. And when you're in a smaller body, you don't need the amount of muscle that you had before, although losing it is not ideal, obviously. But yeah, is that- everyone needs muscle. 
regardless right. of goal. Tell us, tell us more. Function is function. You got to squat. You got to hinge. You got to push. You got to pull. You got to thrive. You know, it's so funny how so many people are concerned about a six pack and stuff like that. But the thing that scares me is I don't ever want to be in a walker. I don't yeah. want help going okay. from room to room. I want to be able to go up and mm-hmm. down the stairs without a problem. Yeah. That is That's so different. much. That motivates me so much more than having a six pack. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I could never even know that. True. But the functional health, right? Like I, I don't, I couldn't care less yeah. about a six pack. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Like my favorite NSV I think ever was last year when, well, this year was good too with the dolphins swim and everything. Cause I had to get to below a certain weight to be able to swim with the dolphins. Um, but the year before that, my son and I got to go in the waves and he had never been in the ocean before. He's autistic. He was very scared to like do any of that, oh. like, the crashing and the noise and all the things. And so I got in the waves and the fact I, we, we had this, there was a place that I got, it was just, I really went all out. I got this place, this big pool, Panama city beach. And we went out and I remember when I got back looking at what I, the ground I had covered, and the, the bouncing and the waves and the joy on his face and like him just going, let me go, mom, I've got this. I'm like, yeah, don't fuck him. Like, oh, you want to. <laughs> you know? But I remember him just being like, just the joy and the moment of that, right, was so special. And that was like my, I think my biggest thing ever because I got back at the end of the day and I did all that physical stuff. So that was a year into the journey, right? And I wasn't in pain. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, and so- I was like, and I got, so I got to experience my life, right? Yeah. I, like it is, it is, it is only now. I, I think I've lived more in this two years than I've just being so hyper aware and like, so like critical and, and really like thinking through why I'm doing, why I did these things and what I'm doing now. And then I think like going through with the community and stuff, it's See, been. The headspace, the headspace that you're in, that's exactly where I try to get my clients. Yes. That's, that's once, once uh-huh. you're there. Yeah. And the hard work is done. Now yeah. now we can have fun. Now we can have fun with recipes and workouts and strength and all that. Yes. Once you get out of your own way, then then we're good. But yes. most of the time I find that the leg work, the the, the blunt of the work is yeah. getting them to where you are right now. Yeah. I mean I'm not gonna lie, like it was a whole year the for uh, it, but it, I think it's it's been a lot of education, right? Um, and learning from the doctors and and the community. Community mm-hmm. is like community is everything, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Brina, I think you had another question. I'm sorry for running my mouth. I've got one more. Uh, when it comes to fitness and movement, a lot of us really enjoy it and encourage others to keep exploring until they find activity and enjoy and connect with it. So do you think it's good advice? If not, what advice should we give to encourage others to not give up on their fitness journey? So not everyone has to fall in love with kettlebells. Not everyone has to love spinning. I hate spinning. I always have. (laughs) Hurts my ass. (laughs) Same. (laughs) Same. (laughs) I got used to it. I guess I have a rough butt. (laughs) That butt. Oh. <laughs> I, I use this, a cushion too now. But no, yeah. Anyway, never mind. I get it. Yeah. Most men, a lot of men don't like swimming. I, but I love swimming. I love running. So I do that more. So in order for me to discover that I love it, I have to try it. I, I love kettlebell training. I had to try it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, boxing is not for me. Jump rope is not for me. You have fun. Right. You see what you can do. Yeah. And then if there's an interest that grabs you, you gravitate towards it and you learn more about it. Mm-hmm. That's all. And so definitely just keep trying. You don't have to explain yourself to anyone. You like it. Yeah. So do it. Yeah. That's, that's why I get so mad when someone might be doing an unconventional workout or something like that, whether it's a hula hoop or something mm-hmm. and they're doing it and then everyone's like, you're never going to lose weight like that. You're blah, blah, blah. Try running, lift weights. Like, shut up. What are you doing? Complaining from your phone. Shut up. Mm-hmm. Right. You're complaining from bitch. your phone. <laughs> yep. <That's laughs> 
I'm taking, yeah. I'm stealing that one, James. I'm going to steal that oh. one. <laughs> from your what phone. are you doing? You're complaining from your phone. You're complaining from it. your phone. <laughs> yeah, like, they, yeah. And, and, and like the people who like laugh at people at the gym, it's like, they're working harder than you are right now. You're, you're, you got you're, your phone out. And they're taping yeah. them and laughing them. What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. why I unleashed Tammy on them because, because I would be too Tammy's nice. Funny. You guys got to check out. It's pretty funny. <laughs> I, yeah, said, out yeah. I wish we could like splice it in. Uh, that'd be a flawless t-shirt. That would be good. Oh, James, uh, will you give this permission to splice in Tammy? That would be so good yeah. right now. Just be like, oh, there's Tammy. <laughs> I, 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 I will say, and one time I will acknowledge that I am her. I was explaining to Erica how like bummed out I was that I'm never going to get to actually meet her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I really want to. <laughs> I love that. Me too. <laughs> love it. Like, because I think that we would get along so well, but it's me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, you would. We all have two sides, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Rina, I had one more question for you, and I didn't know if you wanted to. Okay, go ahead. Ones you added. Is that is that what you wanted? Brandon? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, you take time That's to care. Cool to correct people online who are often providing skewed science or co um, complete in misinformation to attack people in an overweight or obese body. Um, what do you think motivates them to make that kind of content and what motivates your responses? I just thought of Dr. Bushido. Is it Bushido? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> Money and clout. They know that they're full of shit. They know that they're full of shit. No one, no one can stand there with a straight face and say that fruit's making you fat, that vegetables are bad for you. No one can do that. They can't, even if there's any science backing them up, they know that it's a completely nuanced approach. Like someone, like Dr. Gundry saying that if you have grapes, you might as well have a big chocolate Hershey bar. And it's like, come on, come on, you are trash you want to be controversial mm -hmm. and when i realize that people are doing that for their own personal gain at the expense of others i have zero tolerance for it so yeah i put them in line well i can so relate with that yeah that's exciting when people are like you want to run your mouth run your mouth but if you're staring like my problem is like when people come in and they like fear monger mm -hmm. like like their side effects their gastro i'm like when you say these things to these people that are at home by themselves, they're not going to get up. They're not going to go to the gym. They're not mm -hmm. going to eat less. They're not. And you tell them and you scare them further than that keeps them from going to their doctor for the doctor to assess if it's necessary or not. Right. Well, they get and the so people who live in a black and white world who are incapable of critical thinking yes. who need to be told what direction to listen to, what direction to look yeah. at. And it's that one size fits all mentality that they feel like they're accepted and they feel like they're in a group that understands them and yeah. they don't realize how harmful it actually is to others. Mm -hmm. And yes. that's because again, it's all about them. Right. All about them. So mm -hmm. people sometimes call me a hypocrite because they say that I like bully them or something. Fine. Fine. I, I just, Everybody's James. Yeah. <laughs> Team <Manager. laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, call me bully. Yeah. Because yeah. you are making this harder for probably tens of thousands of people. I'm just calling you out. Mm -hmm. So somebody asked, yeah. If you want to say yeah. that I'm as low as you, go right ahead. Mm -hmm. That's that's wild to me. That's the furthest thing in my mind that I, I would never, ever, ever call you a bully ever. That's like you're the defender, you know. <laughs> like, what do you mean the bully? I, 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 I don't see a bully too. I mean, yeah. like, it's like people I, I don't just throw that word bully. around because they're yeah. Like, I feel so I think, you know, you're not. Well, I mean, <laughs> Tammy and I are really good at talking shit. That's why. I'm yeah. loving that. You, okay, yes, you and Tammy have a good relationship, right? You know. Yeah, yeah, and and we're. <laughs> really good at finding what to say to people to get under their skin. So I guess yeah. that's why. I think what's important too is like, there's what I've sort of learned about commenters and these kinds of things, like, is that it's rarely about the actual person. Like you're not trying to change the person, but there are so many people watching. 
right? Mm-hmm. And them and there is something very oh, yeah, powerful. Yeah. Right? They're like they're like they're like people say, um, like do they ever respond to you? Why don't you do a debate with them? I was like, No. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. I don't I don't care if I never talk to them. Yeah. I want people <laughs> to go, Oh, this person makes more sense. I'm gonna listen to them. Yeah, I don't absolutely. care what they think of me. You're right. You get that um, audience so they, watching that's internalizing and, all and, of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the best is like you're just hating because he has this mm-hmm. many followers. I'm like, Do you really think I give a shit about followers? Honestly. <laughs> right. I don't even yeah as long as i have to do tiktok shop i don't care (laughs) facts right there facts and evidence that's what the truth is (laughs) that's it (laughs) although i think i would love to see tammy do tiktok shop for um seek seek, um, protein tiktok shop (laughs) well well we actually just got sponsored by um by a legion which is something that we oh really actually Oh, that's like cool. enjoy that protein something what is that yes 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 it's, yeah. it's a supplement company that we actually stand behind and Bravo. We, uh, offer and we would only do supplements that we like stand behind because that would take away the credibility of my entire brand if that's i, right. I, I that, yeah. didn't agree with so we're gonna find a unique way to kind of get all my characters in and oh that's exciting i'm so excited oh my god me too Everybody follow James so we can see Tammy. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Bushido. Yeah. Awesome. And, and the alpha bro, probably. Okay. Cool. <laughs> nice. I, don't think I, I don't think I caught that one. Did I? No. I love oh, it. Oh, that's a good one. Now I got to go find it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, well I know that you are obviously, you have some things going on. So we want to yeah. make sure that we like respect that and give you time because you've spent quite a bit with us. Um, but it was a lovely conversation. And yeah, thank you. It. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. And um, I'll just put the links to like your socials and stuff in the show notes so people can go and, and follow and learn more. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, all right. uh, you all have a wonderful night and I'll talk Thanks. to you soon. And just let me know if you have any other questions. Absolutely. Well, have, a good night. Good luck yeah. have a great night. <laughs> okay. Bye. 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 Yay. That was great. That was great. Wonderful. I, I'm a big, big fan of his. Yeah. Well, it's so nice of him to do that, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, considering he's got a lot of stuff going on personally to, to make the time, you know? Yeah. So that was really good. Yeah. Good talk. Sorry. I like ran my mouth a lot, but I was like, how do I have a fun part of this conversation? Cause the way it's going, I'm not really in it. <laughs> so I was like, but he was very clear that he's a critical thinker. And I'm like, all right, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He is like, There's he no way he's like, wait, I'm like, let's go. To answer, and I love that part. Like, wait huh? a minute, I'm not going to answer right away. I have to think on this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, just real quick, Kim, I, I have to say one of the NSVs that I've noticed on your journey is, um, remember the Nashville trip? Um, that it was like a community like meetup. I mm-hmm. don't remember. It was last summer, maybe. Yeah. Um, it was like October, November, October, October last year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was last year. Uh, but there was stairs at the Airbnb that you were at and yeah. um, they were a little intimidating for you. Right. And then <laughs> the last time I saw you, you were running up and down those stairs. Like it wasn't, it wasn't those stairs, but it was a set of stairs. And I was like, look at you go. <laughs> I remember that. We were in Atlanta. Those were some stairs. Mm-hmm. There were wow. some stairs. And you were doing, without even thinking that I was like, okay, mom. Oh, I was just like, well, there are the stairs. I got to go up them. Like, <laughs> you, but you took them on without even thought. And like, yeah. you did it with ease. So yeah. that's yeah. another MSC. That's you. true. That is a good one. I do remember that. Yeah. It's funny that you remember that. Cause I, cause I remember filming that Airbnb where and yeah, you were like, like, there's a lot of stairs in this oh, house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there, there were. And they it's not even like just stairs. They were steep. Like they were like, you know, and, like, narrow too, and, I, and I have a knee problem. So it was like on top of it, you know? So, but yeah, I think, um, I think that's another point too of like people understanding like strength training that you can do at home. You can go up and down your stairs. Like you don't have to do it fast and you don't have to do it for hours or, you know, or anything like that. But you could just take 10 minutes, three yep. times a week. Go up and down mm-hmm. your stairs, right? If I can't get to the gym, what I do is I step up, kick back, step up, kick back, like kick my mm-hmm. leg back. Like, so, and 
Baby, my legs are burning afterwards. <laughs> go go up and down that a couple of times. That's no joke. Hands down, that video of you after you had like leg day or bud day. <laughs> when you could oh, not make it up the down. stairs. <laughs> and you played that song from Johnny Cash. I hurt myself today. today. <laughs> <laughs> I had leg day with Lewis with my husband. If I could still <laughs> you. <laughs> like, I was like, well. Yes. <laughs> that day did not go viral. I was so good. Like day with Lewis is no joke. It is no <laughs> joke. He he pushes you to failure. That's what it is. He yeah. makes me do drop yeah, stuff. Yeah, which yeah. is brutal. Yeah. Brutal. Drop yeah, yourself to failure. Yeah. I thought this was a really good episode. I think it's good that we we consider as we learn and as we grow and as we become critical thinkers even more than we were before, right? Because I think, again, it allows us to get to the headspace, right? I think it's important that we consider other people that may seem on opposing, but it's not black and white, right? It's not eat less, move more. It's not just medicine with nothing else. It's holistic, right? So I think it's good for us to, to have different you know, perspectives so that we can all learn and grow together, you know? Good guess, Kat. Huzzah. Yes, that's right. All right. Well, we love you guys, and uh, we will see you next week. Hasta la pasta. Hasta la pasta. <laughs> Bye. I love you. Bye, smooches, hearts. <laughs> you nerd. I'm a nerd. I know. Are you interested in understanding GOP-1 medications like Ozempic, Wagovi, or Manjaro? Then join us on the plus side, Cracking the Obesity Code, the groundbreaking podcast helping people change their lives one episode at a time. The Plus Sides podcast is a disruptor. We're breaking down barriers, smashing stereotypes, and sharing inspiring stories that'll leave you feeling informed and empowered. Join us every week to learn from doctors who are specialists around GLP-1 medications like Ozempic, Wagovia, and Manjaro. They'll provide you with science and facts to validate these incredible stories. But that's not all. We'll also bring you the voices of the GLP-1 Manjaro TikTok community, real people who face the challenges of obesity related diseases and disorders and discovered the incredible plus sides of GLP-1 medications. Our episodes are filled with heartwarming stories, laughter, and moments of triumph. You'll connect with our amazing community members who are reclaiming their health and experiencing their fullest lives. Are you ready to embark on a journey of discovery and empowerment? Tune in to the plus sides cracking the obesity code and together we'll change the narrative around obesity and end the stigma. Subscribe now on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform platform and join our incredible community. Let's celebrate the plus sides of life together because every story deserves to be heard. Every life deserves to shine and everyone deserves access to expert knowledge and medication. The Plus Sides Podcast. You're not alone. It's not your fault.